let's let's talk about the sentiment of people for just a moment and why traders do what they do and how they do what they do and why. An Oracle is a perfect, perfect example of this, especially as it relates to day trading. And it really, in a way, relates to uh, why some people just oftentimes lose money on a trade. And what it comes down to is this is a huge, huge fear that so many people don't even realize they have the fear of missing an opportunity. Fear of missing an opportunity. Huge fear that a lot of people have. Because in their mind's eye, what they do is before they get into a trade, they think about how much money they're going to make on the trade. That's what they do. They say, all right, I'm going to get into the trade. I'm going to make this amount of money. And that's all they do. In their, eye, in their mind's eye, they see profit. They don't see the risk. They don't see the sentiment of the candles. They don't look at the charts necessarily. They just see, how much money am I going to make on this trade? And, for example, on Oracle, and they get into this trade and they see this. Type in a three if you've done that. I, I my, my hand's raised. I've done this more times than I can count, and I didn't realize what I was doing until I started doing it. But they see this candle. They see this. They create this giant white candle in their eyes, and they go, "Oh man, that's gonna be so much money!" I'm really, really excited about that. I'm really, really excited about that. Because why do we trade, right? We trade to make money. That's what a lot of people trade for, which is not necessarily a good or bad thing. That's just a result of following your trading plan. Following your trading plan, ironically enough, ladies and gentlemen, will make you money. It, it just works out that way. <laughs> It works out that way. If you follow your training plan, you will make money at some point. Just like if you follow your business plan, if you follow your relationship plan, or your child rearing plan, or whatever plans you guys have in life, if we follow them, it works out. So if we zoom into a five minute chart, this is just really in a simplistic form what people think. There's a lot of people that if you look at this particular trade on Oracle, they'll sit here and they will watch this trade. And they will say to themselves, right here, what? For one frequent trader point, can you guys tell me what people are thinking right there? They're thinking, I want to get in, but I'm afraid of how much I'm going to lose. That's actually what they're thinking. Because that is the place to take the trade. But they think to themselves, if I take this trade, I'm afraid I'm going to lose. Why? Why are they afraid of losing? Why are they afraid of losing? Because they do not know how much money they're going to lose, and they do not like to be wrong. They have no idea how much money they're going to lose if they're wrong on the trade, and they don't like to be wrong because they don't have a plan. They're emotionally trading. They're saying to themselves, if I'm wrong, then I'm stupid. If I'm stupid, I'm not a good trader. If I'm not a good trader, I don't make money. And if I don't make money, my wife or my husband won't like me anymore. And they start they start rationalizing it, and it all comes down to a subconscious fear uh, that we have of not being enough and not being loved. Right? If we don't make enough money and we don't trade good enough, then people aren't going to like us anymore. As crazy as that sounds, it's a, it's a huge subconscious fear that people don't have. It's just, just this, this loop that people don't even realize that you're talking about. But it starts right here with... I'm afraid uh, of getting into this trade because I'm going to lose money. There's a chance that I'm going to lose money. And it all relates to I'm not being loved enough and people aren't going to like me enough if I lose money. Crazy as that sounds. But from here, the stock starts going up, 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 starts going up. Starts going up. And what do they think right now? here. <laughs> High of the day breakout after Oracle has moved some 20% or so in the day. What are they now thinking? Same exact people who bought, same guy who bought right there. What are they thinking? Crap, I'm missing it now. I was right. It, it worked. I got to get in because I was right. I knew I was right. I knew it was going to go up and it did. Now I'm right. My analysis was correct. I've got to get in because I'm now missing it. So now that they are right on the trade, they now have a 
fear of no longer being right because they were right. So now they have to justify that they were right. So now they get into the trade. Then the trade goes down. And right about here, it goes back to fear of losing money. Not knowing what you're doing, you get exasperated, you get annoyed, you get frustrated, you get angry. If you have any of those emotions in trading, that means you're being an emotional trader and you're not following your plan. Because at the end of the day, all fear of losing money comes back to subconsciously our, our two main biggest fears. Because if we don't have money, then we'll think that, okay, my family or myself or my kids or whomever won't love me if I don't have any money at all. I won't have anything to show for my life. I won't have anything to show for all my hard work. But in reality, all it comes down to is just having a plan, following it, and not caring about the money. Because if money controls you, money is a mindless being. It doesn't have any control over you. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't create or destroy. It's just, it's just there. And you have to use it as a tool. Almost like a screwdriver or a hammer. Right? Because they think, what if I lose? That's the, They go into the trade, what if I lose? When in reality, if we get into a trade, there are a lot of people who get into, who do not get into a trade just you know, if they have a fear of losing money. And then when they do get into the trade, it's because they have a fear of missing out. So fear is controlling them every step of the way. So if you can eradicate fear of money, by creating a plan that you are now afraid of or that you are you don't want to stray away from it makes two different things to worry about it has it creates two different things to even focus on because you have to understand in trading we are going to lose on on trades we're going to lose money it is going to happen and oftentimes we have to remind ourselves this is a profession Ladies and gentlemen, type in a three if you have been in your life at some point employed by a boss or someone over you. <laughs> if your boss tells you what to do, do you do it? Yes or no? Yeah, you oftentimes did it. right? They told you what to do. Ideally, you would do it. It's called a good employee. But in trading, who is our boss? We are. You. You are your, bo you are your boss now. So when you rationalize yourself in and out of a trade, would your boss do that? I mean, if your boss says, hey, do this, and then you come back to your boss and go, well, I don't really know if we should do this because this is like, no, this is this is the way it needs to be done because this is the plan. And, you know, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we, just, we need to do this because this is the plan. And then you go back to your boss and go, well, you know, what if the company loses money doing this? But what if they don't make, you know, you're just going back and forth, back and forth. You never get anything done. You probably get fired at some point. I'm not saying that I'm not going to go into the workplace environment where, you know, there's back and forth. Obviously, there's always a good thing at some point. But... In trading, this is our profession. This is our business. So we have to tell ourselves what to do. So this telling of ourself what to do should not be a mental game. It shouldn't be a mental game. We should take the stress off of ourself and have a plan. We look down at the plan and we go, oh yeah, I do that. Okay. Instead of you and the stress being on you, place the stress on something that doesn't even exist. Something that doesn't have feelings, just your plan. <laughs> right? Don't make you the one who has to make the decision. Say and create and write down your plan. Did I say I was going to do this? Did I want to do this? Is this the right thing to do? Oh, yeah, my plan says I can do this. So then you do it. And if you're wrong... You followed your plan, and if you're right, you followed your plan, it all comes back to this. And that is the difference, and that is the entire culmination of the differences between 
emotional traders who are stressed out and at some point lose money, or traders who just simply trade the markets, follow their plan. And if they do that, they become consistent. And once they become consistent, they become disciplined. And they become disciplined, they become profitable. Boop. Simple as that. Simple as that. Um, Arthur, that's a good suggestion. He goes, you should have an explanation of consciousness and subconscious and psychology transcribed on your risk management and or training lifestyle articles on the website. Uh, as a matter of fact, Arthur, if you come to articles and you come right here where it says the fear of losing money, you will see that that is all written out and transcribed already. Probably one of the better articles that we've written. Um, phenomenal. <laughs> Arthur says, what a coincidence. Yes. Yes, what a coincidence. Quite. Uh. So, yeah. The help, ladies and gentlemen, does that kind of make sense? Because, again, that's that's really all it is. It's like, it's just we, we have, you know, you have a fear of being wrong, and then you have a fear of missing the trade. When in reality, who cares if we're wrong? If we're wrong, we mitigate our risk, we followed our plan. You guys hear me say that quite often when I take a day trade. I don't care if this trade works or not. I have to take this trade all the time because this is the trades that we need to take. And if we take them, we lose. And if we don't, we, you don't take the trade, you don't make money, you don't lose money. If you do take the trade, you lose money, no big deal. As long as you follow your plan, that's all that matters. That is all that matters in trading. So I appreciate that. Uh, you know, yeah, I got, I love you guys' comments. Thank you. It, it took me a long time to kind of figure this stuff out. <laughs> kind of. Oh, Zane, that was, Zane gets a frequent trader point. Not only was it was a joke, but it was a pun, but it also made sense. Oh, phenomenally written. <laughs> Zane said, that's how you go pro. Joke for Arthur. Since Arthur is, uh, <laughs> he doesn't like GoPro. <laughs> Oh, man, that's funny. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Simple as that. Simple as that. So on, on Oracle, we'll keep, keep managing that. And the reason I'm bringing this up for those who are listening to this part of the recording um, is because so far this has been, you know, on some traders at some point, a 3R trade, give or take. You know, per my analysis at the moment, we haven't gotten trailed out yet, but we took some of our position off the top, uh, either half or a quarter at the high of the day. And we, we took our stops. Our stop was here. It's so literally like a 12 cent stop. Um, and, you know, Irwin got out for three R's and Higgins is still following, it, I believe, and a few others. But, you know, regardless, you know, if it keeps working, it keeps working. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Simple, the simple fact of the matter is Chris Irwin lost an R earlier this morning on Dunkin' Donuts. Now he's gotten three R's back. Now he's up two R's of the day. R a day keeps the doctor away. R a day keeps the bill collector at bay, whatever you want to say. That's that's it. So um, the students who are listening to this recording, you know, if you ever get a chance to make the trading floor live, we, we have these discussions probably often, um, pretty often actually. And uh, then we go on break, at a, usually right around this time, and then we do the third hour from two to three. So if you have any friends or people or interested ones that you think might uh, enjoy the trading floor, live day trading slash swing trading setup slash commentary slash jokes slash puns galore, it's always good. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Let's um, 